What's good, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits. Hey, with the Apple Watch Series 9 expected to not change much, reports are pointing to the next big jump to happen with the Apple Watch 10. So we've got the details on that, Apple's M3 Pro, M3 Max, and M3 Ultra lineups to bring even more CPU and GPU cores, and a new story details on the iPhone SE 4. I know a lot of you don't even want to hear about the iPhone 16 when the 15 isn't even here yet, so let's talk about the Apple Watch 10 since the Series 9 isn't here yet instead. Okay, so according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the next big jump for the Apple Watch isn't happening with the 9, but with the Apple Watch 10, and it makes sense since that is such a significant number, and it was also the iPhone 10 where we saw Apple make a significant change to the iPhone design that was notching short of amazing. I mean, not that I need to remind you, there's a notch, and there's still a notch today, and there's notching you can do to change that. Now, Gurman reports that he's unsure if Apple will release it next year or even hold out for 2025, but the fruit company is working on a thinner casing for Apple Watch 10, and it's also looking at different ways for the bands to attach to the new Apple Watch 10 design that has remained the same since the very first watch. Um, did someone say a new band attachment? Like, if this is already starting to freak you out because you own multiple Apple Watch bands because you have a lot, like a big collection that you've invested in, Start freaking out like I am right now. German says the current band system takes up a lot of space that could be used for a larger battery or other components instead. And Apple is now considering a new magnetic band attachment system because we all know that magnets will hold onto anything when tugged or pulled really hard. Now it's not clear if the new system will be ready for the Apple Watch 10 and I'm just thinking out loud here, maybe the standard Apple Watch gets this new band system or how about that they just don't change it at all? But the Apple Watch Ultra, that is not the type of product that you want magnetic bands for. Because if they do, <laughs> that's a band apple! Boo! Get it? Um, Band instead of bad? All right, the new Series 10 could also be the first Apple product to use micro LED display technology, which has better color accuracy and clarity compared to the current OLED displays. The 10 could also be the first Apple Watch to finally get a new health sensor and feature blood pressure monitoring like Samsung has had for years and other devices. But don't hold your breath for blood glucose monitoring anytime soon either, which still feels like the holy grail of sensors for most people. It's complex, it's tricky, Apple's still working on it in-house, but this could really be three to five years away. Now the Series 9 is gonna be a minor refresh. I mean, I joked earlier last video about how the biggest change might be a color option. And now that's starting to feel all too real. Apple is also considering switching the Apple Watch away from an annual upgrade cycle, according to German, and it makes sense if it doesn't impact their revenue too much. They know the numbers more than we do. Otherwise, more new colors every other year. Yay! Now we talked about it here, but the next big jump in the Apple Watch will come from either new health sensors that bring new capabilities or significantly improved battery life. You know, I had a Series 4 until I upgraded myself to Series 7, and now it feels like I'll be waiting again until the Apple Watch 10 for my next personal watch upgrade. And yes, that's actually more normal. In fact, I'm probably upgrading more than a lot of people still. We've got some people out there upgrading their Apple Watch every year, I guess, but Series 9 and Ultra 2 don't look to have too many changes that are compelling. So I know a lot of you are already thinking right here, right? You're trying to figure this all out. Maybe you'll hold off on upgrading your iPhone and watch in 2023. So that just means that you'll have more money saved for the Apple Vision Pro in 2024. I'm kind of kidding, but actually not really because some of you are legit thinking that right now. Some of you have already thought that. And that's, that's when you should put those random thoughts floating in your head in the comments. Like, this is really a safe space. Like, for example, what's the meaning of life? Or how does Brian still look the same 10 years later after I found out he's had his own YouTube channel this whole time? I read them all. Okay, let's talk M3 chips and the latest report from Mark Gurman breaks down the increase in CPU and GPU cores that we expect to see when comparing the M3 Pro, M3 Max, and Ultra lineup compared to their M2 counterparts. So here's the breakdown because the standard M3 will reportedly have the same CPU and GPU configuration as the standard M2 chip, so take a look and every step up with the Pro, Max, and Ultra, the chipset gets even more impressive. And these are all based on the new three nanometer process. So right, better performance, 
better energy efficiency for better battery life. Now, if we're looking at an M3 Ultra, and I'm going to tell you, the current M2 Ultra is already more than any normal sane person needs, unless you're starting to take 8K video seriously, or you're responsible for sound design for an entire full-length feature movie for a studio. There's a few. But the M3 Ultra will reportedly go up to 32 CPU cores with 24 high performance and 8 energy efficient ones, and then either 64 or 80 GPU cores. What a freaking monster. Now this is insane power, but across the board, this is truly the next generation of processing power from Apple. Okay, we've got to talk a little bit of iPhone 15, and the latest from 9to5Mac claims that with the new USB-C port expected on the iPhone 15 models, the new iPhones could get faster charging speeds up to 35 watts. Now, the current iPhone 14 lineup supports a maximum of 27 watts. Industry sources say at least some of the iPhone 15 models, more likely the iPhone 15 Pros, will be able to charge at a higher wattage, but reports also claim that the faster charging and potentially faster data transfer speeds will only be available with accessories that have Apple's own M5 certification. So if you don't use an Apple charger or an Apple cable or a third party one that's certified by Apple, no fast charging and no faster data transfer for you because that's not petty at all. And hey, maybe we just need the European Union to step in again and help us all out. All right, let's talk iPhone SE 4. And right off the top, it's not expected to show up at this year's fall event. And it's another product that we might see in 2024 or even 2025. Well, Leaker Unknowns 21 says the fourth gen iPhone SE will have an iPhone 15 Pro style action button along with other new features. Yes, that action button that has been rumored but still not even officially revealed yet on the 15 lineup. And it's been reported that the SE will take inspiration from the iPhone 14. And this SE 4 will be based on the iPhone 14's design. It will also reportedly feature a USB-C port taking the SE off lightning for the first time. And it will also have Face ID for the first time, which means the notch isn't going anywhere. And that could mean Touch ID would be gone from the iPhone lineup finally, at least with current models. Now, the SE 4 is also expecting to get an upgraded OLED display and will potentially be one of the first Apple devices to contain their long rumored and custom made 5G modem. So iPhone SE 4, you have to wait for it. It's being targeted for really a 2025 release and we'll, we'll see you then down the road. See, you didn't want me to talk about iPhone 16, but I talked about Apple Watch 10 <laughs> and iPhone SE 4. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. It's a lighter week on news, but it's gonna get very busy very, very soon. Still no official invite or word from Apple, but September 12th is still the current target date for the next Apple event. All right, if you like what you see, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests. And you can support all my content with an ad-free version of the podcast early access to my content and exclusive content at patreon.com slash Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Peace and love.